Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Zebra label designer software. So I've got a sample label uh, that I'm going to open. So I've downloaded this from the website. Assuming Zebra designer is installed, it'll open the label for us. Uh, and here's my starting point for my label. So this is a 1.25 by 2.25 label. Um, I'm going to pretend that we want to change the size of this label. We want to we want to print a one by three label. So I'm going to go into document properties management stocks, and then we can see a bunch of options. So these are different types of labels that you can that you can purchase uh, depending on your needs. So I'm going to choose the one by three inch label. All right, so we've got a little work to do to make this. Um, to make this make these uh, fields fit on this label. So first thing you notice is that these fields are showing in red. If they're showing in red, if the data inside the field cannot fit inside the box that we've given it to print, it, it will print nothing. So if you ever get a label that appears to be printing nothing, that's why. Uh, so I'm going to shrink this down, move it toward the bottom. I'm going to take price and let's rotate this. Okay. And we'll make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to keep the product description the same. So while I'm doing this, a few things to note. Where's this Jack Daniels whiskey, Tennessee whiskey? This is just placeholder text. What I'm after here is something that looks similar to the longest product description that I would run into in my database. Again, I want to make sure that the, the absolute longest description that I'll use will fit inside this box and that it'll look good. Uh, now, just like any good kind of designer software, we have the ability to change the alignment. Um, we have the ability to change the fonts, though that is very much limited in terms of uh, label printing. There's certain built-in fonts into these label printers and so I can see that I have these zebra options of fonts. It doesn't give me a ton of variety but I have some variety. I can also change the font size. Um, I'm seeing that exclamation point so this is telling me that I won't be able to fit everything in this text I need or this text box. I need to make it larger. I either make the text box larger or the font smaller. Now, if I untoggle this setting right here that says show printer fonts only, I'll actually have an option to print uh, all kinds of different fonts. Now, this is possible, but it's technically not supported by our team because it can introduce some problems. Um, so if you're going to do that, uh, you're doing it at your own risk. We uh, won't provide support for that. Um, now if I want to change this default value to see how well it will fit, I can just change this initial value. Now notice it says connected data source and it says model.data.description. This is the product description. This is our way of saying product description inside of our program, a cloud retailer. So model.data.price.2string. So this is your regular price. This is the primary product code. Um, if we wanted to add a new field to the label, so I'm going to add size. So I have some variable options over here. Now we have two different ways that we can add text. We have text and a text box. We're going to use a text box. I recommend that. And you now uh, you can say fixed data so you could type anything you wanted here so for example if you wanted your location name to appear you could do that or you can connect it to one of these variables Now we have this initial value again you can put whatever you want in here um, I'm going to align this in the center uh, and another thing I'm, I'm gonna make the price larger um, and I'm going to add the inverse to this just to make it a little bit stand out a little bit more. So 
uh, I can actually highlight something in inverse and it should print out that way. And I, there's other options, obviously, like a picture, um, a line, rectangles, etc. You can add additional fields. So once I have this label looking how I want it to look, um, you're going to want to save it and keep it. Uh, so just save as, and I'm going to save it as my one by three label. Uh, so you'll be able to come back and edit this later. Um, another important next step here is to test it. So if I go test print, it's not actually going to send a print job to my printer. It's going to create a file. Um, so name it kind of whatever you want, doesn't matter. Uh, here's the file. Now when you try and open this, it won't know how to open it. Choose the option uh, notepad. So if you double click on it, it should prompt you. I'm going to say open with notepad. And now I'm going to print the contents of this file. Now your zebra label printer will either be set up as generic text only or it will be set up as the Z designer. So it depends on your setup. So definitely print these uh, to test to make sure it looks good before you um, upload it to Cloud Retailer. If it looks good and I'm ready to upload it to Cloud Retailer, I need to choose this option to store it. So under operation, I'm going to say generate print file with variables and then I'm going to tell it where I want it to store the file and I'm going to put this on my desktop again. Call it my 1x3 label and then I'll say generate file. Now here again, I need to open this up with Notepad. And you can, there's some remnants inside here of this label that you've designed. This is the templating language that's kind of underneath the hood. But here I can see that description, or I can see the size. Um, it looks a little bit ugly, but it works very well for printing labels. So I'm going to come into Cloud Retailer. And I'm going to go into admin and label templates. And here I am. And I've already created this new label template called shelf label one by three. Uh, and, you know, give it your description, your name, etc. Leave these all. Typically, you're going to want to set these the same way I have. You can set any notes you want. And then you'll want to paste the input of that file here. Now, the output's pretty ugly. You can, again, kind of get some remnants of what's going on in here. It's replacing that description with an example item from your database. In this case, a Bud Light keg. Here's the product code for that Bud Light keg. Um, it's ugly, but when this gets sent to the printer, the printer handles formatting it in this good-looking sort of way. Um, so once you store it, uh, you can then start using it to print labels. When you see the print preview, it likewise is going to be a little bit ugly, a lot of a lot ugly actually, um, but it works. It works very well. So I'll kind of show you what that looks like. And so this is what the print preview looks like, but when you actually send it to a Zebra label printer that's been set up properly, it'll render this label for you. Uh, and take care of all the formatting. I hope this helps.